بسم الله والصلاة والسلام على خير خلق الله محمد بن عبد الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وبعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته um, I'm very delighted and honored إن أكون بيناتكم اليوم uh, بإحساسين جميلين uh, ما بين الخرطوم وبن قازي فما كان لي إلا أن أستذكر يعني كلمات الأستاذ الشاعر محمد الفيتوري لما وجدته من محبة واحترام وتقدير من الأخوة في في بن قازي فما لي إلا أن أقول في حضرة من أهوى عبثت بي الأشواق فحدقت بلا عين ورقصت بلا ساق فسعيد جدا أن أكون بين ظهراني ليمو بالتحديد وبن قازي وليبيا أخوان أعزاء في فترة قصيرة يعني لم أجد منهم سوى الترحيب والمحبة والتقدير فشكرا جزيلا uh, First I would like to, to zoom out from Langenhans to go back to the health system at, at glance. Uh, and then from there, I would like to emphasize on a tool that's most probably used in enhancing the quality. Um, most of the people who know Khabab, they just link things to the quality. I'm, I'm the one who is always love and inspired to talk about the quality. Linking the quality to the education, linking to, to quality uh, of life, of health, and safety of the patients. Uh, before I start, my talk specifically, I would like also to go and zoom further out and linking my talks to the sustainable develop development goals as usual. Uh, all of us, we may hear about sustainable development goals and myself, I'm considering my, my, my professions and my practice to achieving some milestones in the goal number three, good health and well-being. And this is tool most probably used to enhance the quality of uh, surfaces. And I try to do my best to link this educational part in dentistry and dental practice. Okay, I'm going to talk about quality in healthcare, then patient safety and medical errors, continuous profession, uh, continuous quality improvement, evidence-based medicine, clinical audits, and it's important, and the role of clinical ed audit in general dental practice and dental education per se. When we say quality in healthcare, we should remember that it should be an effective, safe, people-centered and patient-centered, as well as timely, equitable, integrated, and efficient. This is specifically the structure and the requirement should be applied when we're talking about the quality in healthcare. If you miss any part of, of this checked item, then you need to revisit your definition and your work about uh, healthcare quality. Here is a definition from WHO. They just would like to put the balance between desired outcome and undesired outcome for, for the patient and for the population as well. And here we need to upgrade and raise our performance uh, every now and then to come up in a link with the standards and patient requirement as well. Here, do we need a quality in healthcare system? If yes, then we would like to reduce the, the medical error to ensure the safety, satisfy our customers, patient, community, uh, families, and other parts of the community, optimize the use of resources, and help anticipating the problem before it's happened. Then what's patient safety? When, 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 when we talk about need of quality, we just would like to ensure the, safe, the patient safety. The patient safety in healthcare is a little bit complex due to the complexity as we're going to see in the next slides. Just the, there is a two figures here I would like to emphasize on. Each year, more than 134 million adverse event occur in hospital, especially in our middle or low and middle income countries due to unsafe care. And this is resulting in 2.6 oh, million deaths. And you can find much of number that can indicate what's happened. So we'd like to know what the medical error and how can we, we deal with and try our best not going to that storm. So the medical error is, 
is a result from any fault the system and process, not individuals. Most probably, when we talk about errors, we just come to human factor as the main source of errors. No, just we need to go back and visit our processes and visit our system and see from where can we define the errors and we can manage them from there. So all the clinical incidents that harm to the patient are medical errors. And we need to find out and know this. So if we would like to manage, we need to make a kind of incidence report, impact assessment, incident escalation, incident resolution, and post-incident review. So we need to deal with our error very meticulously. Here there, are, there is five fundamentals in quality in healthcare should be um, um, applied to each healthcare facility, to each, to each clinic, to each side of practice, on-site support, measurement, sharing and learning, stakeholders and community engagement, and management. And I would like to focus here in, measure, in measurement. We would like to measure our practices and to know it very clearly. So why would we like to measure? We would like to measure to determine the effect of healthcare on desired outcome and to assess the degree to which healthcare adhere to the process on specific or for the scientific evidence. Ah, clear. We just come up with the word evidence and the scientific evidence. So in healthcare, we're not working on our minds. We need to go back to the exactly scientific evidence. And from here, just I would like to highlight about evidence-based medicine or evidence-based practice. So we have a reference. We need to go back to protect ourselves from going into any faults of error. And we need to focus on evidence-based medicine and know it, what can we do. And here, this is an example for evidence-based medicine cycle. And we would like to, imply, to apply this cycle to our practices. And in each step, you may find many, many kind of checklists, many kind of applications. And you may find the clinical audit as one of the evidence-based practices that may help you in being with up to standards in your practices. And here, just I would like uh, to thank our colleague in Tabab in Sudan for uh, giving the opportunity to go in evidence-based medicine and clinical audit with Gordon Guyatt, who is the father of evidence-based medicine from McMaster University. And it was a very nice day to hear from the guru in, in evidence-based medicine. So back to the, to the quality. And all the time, I would like to define quality as a continuous quality improvement or continuous process. It's not an endless process. And you need to go for every process to find your opportunity to improve that process. Here in health system, just would like to remind ourselves how complex our system is in, in, in health care. And you can, you can see a kind of this tunnel or um, or mesh or network, you find the needs of healthcare, you find uh, the population, you find the doctors, and you need a kind of intersectoral policies with different, you need a kind of justice policy. So that's make a, a little bit hard effort to be done to achieve a quality in your practice. And here we have uh, someone who proposed a nice model in a healthcare model, he's called uh, Don Epidian, he, he proposed this model of care. And this model of care will reflect on a three major things. That's input, processing, and output, as usual, we are, as, as we know. And here, in the input, he put the structure, the staff, department, equipment, supply. And the process, he put all the stuff that we are doing in a, in a daily basis, from the protocol, uh, physician's order, nursing care. And you can apply this to the dental practice as well. And here in the outcome, the complexity appears. It's not just looking for satisfying or, or getting care pressure. No, we need to do the balance we talk about. We need to prevent our patients from six Ds, from diseases, from disability, from any harm or medical errors that can be occur. So we need to, to go back for our passion as love. And this God sometimes make people laugh. The quality is about love. 
And in, in the literature, you are going to find this quotation from uh, Everest Dunopidian. He said, ultimately, the secret of quality is love. If you have love, you can then work backward to monitor and improve your system. Oh. Going backward, monitor and improve your system. So we need to find the tools that's needed to be used in, in that going back journey. That tools used for the monitor, that tools used for improvement. And there is many tools. One of the most important tool in the healthcare is the clinical audit, and you may find many other tools. And this is our focus is going to be on. So what is the link between quality improvement and clinical audit? So clinical audit is a systematic data guided activities designed to bring about an immediate improvement in healthcare delivery in a particular setting. So we, can, we, 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 we may know the audits and we have an expert for quality and they go back and check. No, in the healthcare services, we just emphasize in the clinical practices. We need to go back into our clinical practices and check what's going on there. So clinical audit is a process of systematic critical analysis of quality in dental care. That's why I link here to the dental care. You can put healthcare. You can put any kind of clinical practice that you would like to, to add to deliver to the, uh, to, deliver to the, to the patients. So what is the purpose of the, of the clinical audit? From the previous slide, you can come up with, with the different uses. But he would like to catch the current potential problems before they adversely affect. So you need to be proactive. You did your clinical audit as a proactive action. Then you need to identify the surface deficiency. So that may be remedied. Encourage a dentist to assess all aspects of patient care and consider its routine work. So if you would like to improve your, your, your quality of care in dentistry, consider the clinical audit as a routine work. And then you may come up with a good part. Clinical audit and clinical governance. We need to link between the clinical governance at glance and we need to look at the clinical audit as a tool. So the clinical audit is an essential tool in clinical governance. And even so, you can see the publication of clinical audit is a requirement in your continuing practice in an HRS system. You need to pursue a number of clinical audits from time to time and put it into, into your file. And here we can see these are the pillars of clinical governance. And NHS put the clinical audits as one of these pillars. And this emphasizes on the importance of the clinical audits in the practice. OK, here is a clinical audit cycle. When you did your clinical audit cycle, you need to know it's in a continuous process. I wouldn't like it's an endless, but it's a continuous. Every time, when, every time you did the milestone, you need to go for the higher one. And here is the cycle you can go. If there is a contribution from the clinical audit to improve the quality, yes, as we mentioned. But actually, in education, per, per se, it's an, it's an, it's an self-learning process. When you make the audit for yourself or for your, uh, for your work, you educate yourself, you review your performance. And then as an institutional level, we may, we may find a way to make any kind of incentives. We can add it as a regulations. We, we can make use of this audit in redesigning our facility, our system, and even so in up updating our registrations. So it's very important to contribute in each part of service and education. And here, Clinical audit is the cornerstone of clinical governance and total quality management in healthcare. So when you go back into your practice and, you, and make your, your audit for yourself, then you can review and you provide a kind of overview of your practices in different ways, in, in de-educating the people, in revisiting the system, in enhancing the environment itself. The importance of clinical audit 
As we say, we would like to define the error before it's happened. So identify it and promote the good practices. Show others the effectiveness, cost effectiveness of your service, ensure the development, provide opportunities for education and training, ensure better use of resource, improve communication and liaison between, between the staff. In a conclusion, audit can be your chance to make change to the everyday working environment and help making a dental experience better for your patients. In addition, well designed audit will be extremely valuable for your career as a patient, as well as patients. And in your career, you are going to see in the next presentation and a kind of a truly conducted uh, clinical audits, and I'm very happy and glad that audit is being carried out within a Limo Dental Clinic. So get ready for the next presentation. Before I would like to, before finalizing my presentation, and I make a promise to to save on a kind of five minutes. <laughs> okay. It's 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 all about al ihsan. It's all about al ihsan. It's all about al ihsan. كل الأمر في الجودة وفي التدقيق وفي المراجعة هي أن نحاول أن نحسن في عملنا. إذا أنت عايز تحسن في عملك there is many tools you can make use of. I'm talking about الإحسان. الإحسان الإحسان. Excellence. That 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 is the aim, I think, for, for, for ours, uh, of our daily practice, of our vision and mission in life. And I, I think all of us would like to get that in that level of, of al-haya. You know, thank you very much. Uh, hopefully, it was to the point presentation. Thank you.